What's up YouTube? In today's lesson, we'll cover how to build this section and make it fully responsive on all screen sizes. We'll cover the best time to use EM, REM, pixel, and percentage units. We'll build out sort of this element right here that whenever we increase or decrease the width, all the elements inside adjust using percentage. We'll also talk about how to make the font sizes on our site increase when the user changes their preference without it affecting the actual graphical layouts on our site. If you'd like to follow along, feel free to clone the clonable in the description below, delete the elements inside of the container, and then clear out the classes to follow along. All right, to get started, I cloned the wizardry style guide, and from there I uploaded the images and assets I need. I'll select the body and go to the body all pages tag. This is affecting every page on the site. I'll set the background color to black, the text color to white, and then I'll go ahead and set the font to Poppins. This is affecting all the elements in my page. Then I'll delete all the elements inside of the container till I have an empty container here. And I'll go ahead and drag in an H1 heading. So I wanna set the font size of my H1 and it's currently set to 78 pixels. Whenever I'm setting that size, I also need to account for the width of my entire design. And here's why. Here we have a 1920 and a 1580 design. In both these cases, the heading is set to 172 pixels, but here it looks a lot larger compared to the other elements than it does in the first design. So whenever we're setting a font size to get the correct proportions, we need to also account for the width of our design. And the wizardry site has this set up for us. So here my design width is 1440. My heading size is 78 pixels. So if I head over to the wizardry site, I can say my design was designed at 1440 pixels and my font size of my heading is 78 pixels. And that'll give me my EM font size. So I can go to the all H1 tag, paste in that heading. And if I wanna set a line height, I can basically say this is 78 and then 77 is the line height. So if I come over to line height, I plug in 78 and 77, and that converts it to unitless line height that I can use there and that selects the correct line height. Also have negative 30 letter spacing. So I can basically open this option up and do negative 0.03 EMs. That's gonna be the same as negative 30. And then I'll just paste that in here. And then let me remove those line breaks. Now in wizardry, anytime we want the size of an element to be based on the user's font size preference, we set it using EMs or REMs. EMs are for things that are gonna be fluid, that'll resize with the window width, and REMs will be for smaller things that'll be a fixed size that won't resize with the window width. In this case, our paragraph font size is 16 pixels. That's pretty small, and there's no reason to really scale that any smaller than that. So in this case, I may make this more of a non-fluid thing. So I'll go to my all paragraphs tag, and I'll set it to one REM in this case. That looks about right. I may back it down even a little bit more. So this basically won't shrink with the browser width. It'll just wrap instead. Going back to my design, I believe the logo and the button can be fluid elements that are based on the user's font size preference. So in this case, my logo is 158 pixels wide. So I'll just basically drag that image in. Instead of using the wizardry converter on the site, I'll use the new Chrome extension. So I need to type in set size 1440 to let wizardry know that my prototype width is 1440. And then from there, I can type in 158, which is my element size and just apply that EM value. And then here I'll call this hero underscore logo. Now I'll also need a div to hold all of the left elements, this entire left elements on the page. So I'll basically drag in the logo in there, the heading will go in there as well, and the paragraph, and I'll call this a uh, hero underscore left. And let's just estimate that it's about 40% wide for now. And then we also have basically this button. So that's going to be sort of a link block. And then inside of that, we'll have a little bit of text and we'll give this link block the class of button. We'll give the text inside it a class of button underscore text. And basically this button font size is uh, 18 pixels. So we can make that fluid. So we'll basically type in 18 space enter. It'll convert it to EMs. And then the button itself looks like it has about 61 left and right and about 13 uh, pixels top and bottom. So we'll basically type in 13 here, 13 on the bottom, and then we'll type in 61 left and right. And then let's text align center, everything inside. 
Um, the border on this button is two pixels. So anything over one pixel, I usually set two EMs. So two and enter that in to convert it. And then for border radius, we'll set it to 100 viewport width because we want it to be perfectly round no matter how large the button is. And then from there, I'll just change the text to say view work. And that's set up. And it looks like our margin on this is uh, uh, 36. So we'll add top margin of 36. And then on the heading, our margin is going to be um, it's going to be a little bit larger. So whenever we apply margins directly to our heading, it multiplies by whatever the heading font size is. So usually to get around that, I just wrap the heading in a div. And I'll call this something like a heading contain. And then basically just give that a bit of bottom margin or padding. Either one's perfectly fine, just to space that out like so. Let me also increase sort of the letter spacing right here. And let's change the text like so and let me make sure I don't have any hard line breaks there cool that's working fine and then the margin on this is about 24 pixels so we can do uh, 24 that converts that and we want this container to be full height of the browser height so anytime we have text inside of a div we never want to fix a height because it could cause some overflow on the text we want to set a minimum height instead. So I'll set a minimum height of 100 VH. So it's at least 100% the browser height. And then I can apply Flexbox to align this div to the center and justify to the left. And there we have this hero left div. Now, all of these elements that we've set so far will increase when the user increases their browser font size preference. So let's publish that to test it. And sure enough, we'll notice this is the size of the elements on our site. And if we increase our font size preference, they all get a lot larger. You'll notice the hero left div didn't get any wider though, and that's because it's set to percent. Percent is based on the available space within the parent, not on the user's font size preference. So when we look at our design over here, we probably wouldn't want the size of these elements to increase when the user increases their font size. So we'd wanna set their sizes using percent. So I'm gonna be treating this box as sort of my hero right container. And I already have sort of this hero left div in Webflow, but I'll drag in another div and call this hero right. And I'll give it a width of 50%. Now, if I try and set a height using percent, nothing actually happens, but there's another way we can base the height on a percentage. For now, let me grab the container and justify the space between to anchor this to the other side. And then inside that hero right div, I'll drag in another div and give this the class of hero height. And then I'll go ahead and give it top padding of 100%. Now this is 100% of the parent's width. So if I increase or decrease the width of the parent, You'll notice that the padding, the top padding, also increases or decreases. I'll also set this to position relative, and then let me go ahead and drag a div inside of that and give it the class of hero photo, and I'll anchor it position absolute to the top corner. Now we want to set the width of this photo to percent, so it's going to be based on the width of its parent. So the photo is 314 pixels, the parent is 595. So if we select the hero photo, we would do 314 divided by 595 times 100 and add percent to the end. And now we see it's the correct width. And if we want to do the height, but base that on the width of the parent as well, this is 425 divided by our 595 of the parent. So we would do that as top padding. So we do 425 divided by 595 times 100 percent, just like we did for width. And then that is the correct aspect ratio there. So then from there, we can drag in an image. I'll give this the class of hero underscore image. I want to make sure my photo is it's absolute. So my image can be position absolute as well to cover. And I'll set it to a width of 100% and a height of 100% and a fit of cover. And then I'll go ahead and select this image here. And I want the border radius uh, to be set to 10 pixels. So I need to divide that by the width of its parent, which is 314. Uh, so I would basically, under border radius, do 10 divided by 314 times 100%. And that'll give me the correct border radius. So next we have sort of these hero background graphics. So I'd basically go ahead and drag that image inside of my hero photo. I'll call this something like hero uh, graphic. And then I basically want to set its width based on the width of its parent. 
So its parent is 314 and it is 165. So I do 165 divided by 314 times 100%. And that gives us the correct size. And then I just position it absolute to the top corner. And then I need to figure out its offset, maybe drag out a box to calculate this. So it's about 30 pixels offset. And that 30 pixels, again, is based on the width of its parent, which was the um, 314. So basically for this margin, I would do uh, 30 divided by 314 uh, times 100%. And I would want that to be negative margin. And that's the value we would want to use for all of our negative margins. And I'll add that across every side. I'll give this a Z index of one and the image a Z index of two. And then from there, we also have this sort of uh, button right here. So I'll basically just go ahead and drag in a div. And let me go ahead and give it a position of absolute to cover the full bottom. And then I wanna give this a width of 161 divided by 314. 161 divided by 314 times 100%. And then I want to give it margin auto to center it within the parent. And then I'll go ahead and figure out its height, which is 53. So we do 53 divided by 314 times 100%. And then we also want to basically give this a background color. And then we want it to always be perfectly round so it can have a radius of 100 viewport width. And then we'll give it a high enough Z index so that way it's on top of the photo. And we'll give this something like a hero call for the class name. And let's give it a little bit of negative margin using percent to try and get it right there in the center. And um, from there, we can basically just grab this icon right here. We basically want to make that a div inside of hero uh, call div, I guess we'll just call it for now, and position it absolute uh, to cover the full width and height. And then we'll give it a slightly lower height, maybe something like 50% or something like that, and then give it a width like so, and give it a background color. And we'll also give it the radius like this. And then we want to give it top margin auto, bottom margin auto to center within its parent like that. And we might need to increase the height of it a little bit to get it kind of in the right spot. Then I might give it, a, let's see what a margin would be on this. And then inside that, we would also have our icon. So this would be a hero call icon. And we can go ahead and give this a width, maybe something like, uh, something like 30%. And then we'll select the div and apply Flexbox to align it to the center. Might make that a little smaller. Something like that looks about right. And then from there, I can basically just select this entire hero photo and just duplicate it. And then I can give it a combo class of is2. And that's just going to position an absolute to the other corner, the bottom right. And then we would want to change out the image here. And then we'd want to change out where the background graphic is being positioned. So I can give that the combo class of is2 as well and just position it absolute to the other corner. Then I'll be able to delete this hero call div. And that's pretty much lining up perfectly. And then we just have this graphic. So for this last uh, piece, the chat graphic, I'll make that about the same width as the image below it. So that would basically need to be a div and maybe call it something like a chat this time and position it absolute to the top right corner. And then I'll basically copy the width of my image, basically make chat the same width. And then inside of that chat, I would have sort of an image that would be maybe chat underscore image. And then its width is um, 77 pixels and it would be divided by the 315. So we would do 77 divided by 315 times 100%. Uh, percent. And then whatever that width ends up being, we'd basically want to copy that, use the same value for top padding so we have a perfect square. And then I'll also go ahead and give it a radius of 100 viewport width. And let's go ahead and give it a background image of our actual image here. And let's set it to cover, center, and I'm going to give the chat a pretty high Z index so that way it's on top of everything else. And inside of this chat image, we also have sort of that chat dot. So I'll basically drag that in here. 
and give it the class of chat dot and position it absolute to the bottom um, right, which means this chat image needs position relative. And then that dot is basically, uh, we'll call it 20 pixels divided by the 77. So we can basically do 20 divided by 77 times 100%. And then again, whatever value we have here, we use as the top padding. And now we can give it our background color that we want and give it our radius. And since it's a small border, it can just be one pixel. It's really small there. And that is looking about right. And then from there, we also, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this chat image and actually make a position absolute to the corner here. And then from there, we have sort of these chat bubbles. So those can be sort of a div inside of our chat box here. And I will call this maybe bubble and wanna position it absolute to the top corner here. And its width is um, 161 divided by, I believe our 315. So 161 divided by 315 times 100%. We have that and then its um, sort of height is 44. So 44 divided by 316 um, times 100% gives us about the right size. And then for its border radius, we will be doing 100 viewport width basically on all sides, except that top corner here will be zero viewport width. And let's go ahead and give it a background color, something like that. And we'll give it, it's positioned absolute. So let's go ahead and give it some top padding, basically trying to align it to the right spot and some padding right here to get it kind of in the right spot. And then inside of that, I'm basically just going to drag another div called a uh, bubble wrap and basically set it position absolute to cover the full bubble uh, within height. And the reason for that being we can now drag in sort of this uh, bubble lines is what we'll call them. And let's go ahead and give them a width using percent. And now we can grab the wrap and flex to center. So these lines will pretty much just stay in the middle, just like that, perfect. And we can go ahead and duplicate the bubble and give this a class of is two, and basically use that to maybe push this over a bit more, maybe change sort of the background color like so, and then change where our border radius is. So this would be 100 now, and this one would be zero. Uh, actually, this would be 100, this top one would be zero. And then let's bring this up a little bit, not too far though, cool. And then we can bring it over a little. And what we should notice now when we increase and decrease the size of the hero right is that the entire graphic gets larger or smaller, which is exactly what we want. So this is based on percentage. And if we publish this, what we'll see is when we increase our font size preference, the fonts increase, but the graphics actually stay the same size, which is what we want. This also makes it really easy to make it responsive. So right now it has a max width and then past that max width, it starts scaling. And then on tablet, it basically the text stops scaling, but you'll see the image is still scaling because it's percentage based. So basically what we'd wanna do on tablet is probably stack this vertically instead and we would basically grab this entire hero left and make it 100%, and then maybe add a bit of margin using EMs to kind of push it down. And then our entire graphic right here, the hero right, uh, can be 100% as well. And then it's basically just gonna scale with the browser width. So when we get past this, even all the way down to the smallest version of mobile, it's still scaling. So it's completely uh, responsive.